anybody can grow topiary with stuff that they probably already have lying around the house. It's not complicated at all. Obviously, you need plants to get started. Some of these I have literally dug up from my own backyard. I'll talk about different kinds of plant specimens that really lend themselves to growing topiary a little bit more in much greater detail. But the other things that you need to have on hand are very, very basic. Obviously, for me, I do a lot of growing topiary in containers. So you want to have an interesting breadth and depth of different kinds of containers in all different sizes. Now, almost any kind of container will do. I obviously love the look of really traditional terracotta, whether it's aged or brand new. Anything that's got algae or moss growing on it, I am absolutely infatuated with. I like different sizes and shapes. I often get the question of, is there a certain ratio of the size of the pot to the height of the plant and yes and no I would say traditionally um, the container is about at least a third of the height of the plant like in this double balled uh, myrtle that I've got growing here but in other cases it doesn't necessarily have to be the same I really like the look of a tall, narrow planter with something low growing and cascading over the side. So like all rules, um, they're made to be broken. The other thing that you're going to need is just a good potting blend. And it, what kind of potting mix you're going to use depends on actually what you're growing, just like anything in gardening. So if you're gonna grow something that um, is more succulent in nature or like a cactus or something along those lines, you're probably going to want to get a mix or a blend that is uh, put together specifically for that type of plant. This is just a very basic kind of potting soil. Now, one thing you do want to make sure, because quite often you see in topiary that there is a rather large plant growing in a small pot. In other words, they look kind of top heavy. So you do want to make sure that you feed um, pretty religiously all of your topiaries and that you make sure that they don't dry dry out and that you tend to them with great care. Again, I'll go into that with a little bit more detail in the future. So get a good, a good potting blend. Make sure that you have enough of it on hand. Make sure you also have all different sizes of pots. I've got some that are very, very tiny to some that are extremely large and hold almost tree size specimens. It depends on the scale of the vignette that you're trying to create or the area in their garden that you're trying to enhance with a topiary. That will determine basically the size um, and even to a certain extent the material of the pot. If it's going to be outside and you're going to keep the topiary outside year round, then you're going to want a pot that will be able to overwinter easily. I use lots of concrete and even some faux terracotta and faux concrete. So that's another option. Then the fun of topiary is in the clipping. So you want to make sure that you've got some really good clippers and snippers. Um, all you really need for small tabletop topiary is a good pair of sharp scissors. If you're doing some specialized pruning, then I like the these Joyce Chin um, clippers. I get them off of Amazon. They're in my Amazon shop. These are beloved by florists and anyone who's doing a lot of really fine tuning and fine clipping and bonsai or such. Again, you can find these online. For large topiaries, like my boxwood large cones, my boxwood balls, this by far is my favorite type of long bladed pruner. Any kind of long uh, bladed pruner that you keep sharp is, is workable, but these are Barnell, B-A-R-N-E-L. Again, I get these online. You might be able to find them at your garden center or your nursery. I love them because they've got a really pointed tip. I can be very exacting in my pruning. So a really good sharp pair of shears. I do not use um, many kinds of electrical uh, or battery operated hedge trimmers or clippers because to me I think it bruises the foliage on hedges and large specimens. So typically I stay away from those and again I what I like about topiary is that I am reacting and relating to the plants in a very very personal way. The other thing you're going to want on hand for support 
and I use that, that term lo loosely, is just any kind of staking. So if I'm going to train a specific specimen and I just want what's called a standard or a ball on a stem, I want it to grow straight and I'm going to help it grow straight along the way with various sizes of bamboo caning. I've used some interesting sticks. I have used chopsticks. I've used almost anything that will, again, fit the scale of the size of the plant that I'm trying to train. You want to insert that early on so that you don't do much root damage. And then you also want to make it a little bit taller than what it is you're growing so it gives you adequate space for the plant to mature. You can get these at um, online, but you can also find them almost anywhere at any kind of garden uh, center, hardware store, whatever. Also look for them in interesting shapes. I sometimes have seen them in these oval forms. You can create your own. I've done a little mini masthead here. It looks like oh, kind of a form of espalier, and I've put it, uh, attached these in interesting shapes. So whatever kind of form you want to create, then you'll have a support that will help you mimic that form as the plant matures. You can also get, this is what I call topiary cheating. You can get these forms that already exist like this. These are just wire metal forms. You can find these online. Um, a lot of times you can find a preformed topiary that you can get at the grocery store or at your nursery. If the plant dies, then you just take the plant off and you've got the existing form. It's really easy to grow ivy or euonymus, um, any kind of different, different kind of vining plant up this topiary form. It's easy to do. You can get this form. Um, I trained this Muhlenbeckia or angel wire or wire plant or angel vine on just a simple uh, a, just a simple round wreath form. You can make your own or you can buy them pre-made. So you might want to have those on hand too. Again, it's kind of instant maturity. You don't have to train the plant itself. Basically, you're just winding it around a pre-existing form. Then you want to make sure that you've got something that you can attach the plant and the stem to, to the support itself. You can use raffia, that's very, very popular. Um, you can use even a twist tie, depending on how subtle you want to be. I also like these, what they are is basically tiny, tiny little hair clips. You often find orchids attached to them because it just very easily, without abrading the stem at all, attaches the plant itself to the support. You can use that. You can use just a basic twine. Another thing I use quite frequently are these green Christmas tree hangers because they virtually just disappear when I try to attach the plant to the support. So that's kind of a no-brainer, just be creative. Again, almost anything you have lying around the house will do. To get um, that really finished, sophisticated, florist quality look, to your topiaries, I then practically always mulch the surface in something. And I have a variety of different kinds of substances that I like to use to mulch my topiaries. Probably the most ubiquitous in my garden and what I use most frequently is just simple pea gravel. And I use that because it's already existing in my landscape. I have a lot of gravel, but I also use it because it helps keep squirrels from digging into the soil um, of the pots itself and uh, disrupting the soil surface. It keeps moisture in, pets out, and again, I like the finished quality that it gives almost any kind of potted plant. Now, in addition to using pea gravel, I will use black gravel, I keep it in these little tins. I love beautiful stones. I love crushed gravel. I love beautiful, this has a pearlescent quality to it. And it really just depends on what kind of effect you're trying to create. It serves a practical purpose and very much an aesthetic one. I've even been known to use dried beans around Christmas time, um, tiny, 
little pine cones. You can use tiny little tangerines. I sometimes on the bigger, uh, bigger pots, I will use small pumpkins. You can use almost anything to create kind of a whimsical quality to you, your final arrangement. Another extremely popular mulch is if you use some kind of moss, of fresh green moss. You can harvest this from your own backyard. You can find it at hobby and craft stores. You can buy it online. Line. You can get it from your florist. It's basically very easy to find. And those are the things that I think kind of send your topiary over the top. And it really doesn't even matter if your topiary is, is, is in its completed form or if it's just a little wannabe that you're getting ready to train, it makes it already look very special in a very inexpensive way and makes it part of a beautiful collection that you can then uh, kind of play with as a hobby. So let's talk now about some of the different kinds of plants that really lend themselves to the topiary form.